Howdy all you delicious people, I'm here today to review The Silence of the Lambs. So, we are here today because this movie has uh, gone on and been like this massive pop culture thing. It's kind of interesting how there could be a lot of things that could retroactively make people interested in the silence of the lambs we of course have uh in the movie jim carrey's cable guy uh in the medieval time scene we of course have him reference the silence of the lambs uh we of course have a in living color uh skit uh about the silence of the lambs we also are to uh, have Jay and Silent Bob go and uh, play the music that is in this movie and recreate the whole, like, uh, would you F me? I'd F me. Uh, as Jay is going on and doing this, this dance. So, not only that, we go on and we also have a thing that can go on and help a person get a job. Uh, here's the thing. So Seth Green has had this story where Seth Green was auditioning for Family Guy. And so Seth Green was to kind of joke around because he remembers Buffalo Bill and this kind of certain sounding voice and stuff like that. So Seth Green went on and decided uh for this audition for family guy to just try to do the ted uh levine voice where it's like or it's very deep like this and it's very dark and uh. so we had seth green try that voice and they liked the voice but they wanted kind of like a younger uh variation of it and so coincidentally like uh, Seth Green doing Chris was basically him doing uh, Ted Levine's voice. And then, like, that's how, like, that just panned out uh, for Seth Green. But, like, he kind of just referenced Buffalo Bill. Uh, and I thought that that was really interesting. So, with that said, so there's a bunch of things uh, that kind of have a connection with The Silence of the Lambs. I really honestly just want to call this movie Silence of the Lambs because I don't get the the, but it is what it is. Um, I also don't quite get why this movie is called this. Because, <laughs> yeah, I get it. There's, like, some significance to Clarice about this title. But it honestly just, like, feels like a random thing of, like, dialogue that I wouldn't think would eventually just become a title. It makes the movie, movie memorable, but you would have thought like it would have eventually been called anything but. Uh, but anyways, let's go on and do this up. Because uh, it's about that time uh, to go on and kind of cryptically talk about this film. Uh, but also, I, I want to compare Red Dragon now to... The Silence of the Lambs. So, I honestly have to say that The Silence of the Lambs kind of jumps all over the place. There's a lot of just moving parts going on, several different locations that are throughout this movie. And so, like, Red Dragon might have a better flow um, of how it kind of, um, like, it has a good flow, it has a good pacing, um... I think uh, The Silence of the Lambs is a little bit slower than Red Dragon. Um, but I think there, with this movie, has a lot more memorable things in it than uh, The Red Dragon does. Like, The Red Dragon, eventually, after X number of days, I'm going to forget about Red Dragon, but I'm probably still going to remember a number of lines and a number of things of dialogue that come from this movie just because it's more interesting uh, to go on and have that whole uh, like 
thing of dialogue where Lecter is to go on and say that uh, I had a, 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 a sense to take a test me once and I ate his liver with a uh, with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> how is it? How is it not that this movie is more memorable uh, than Red Dragon? Um, so yeah, like this movie is an easily great film, um, and it's kind of interesting how, for like the longest time, I think a lot of people would say. Like this movie, or probably like the the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, were kind of like usually like the oddball like movies, and nobody else is doing that like those kinds of things. But it seems like now, as far as movie makers and and show makers, it seems that we have gone on to make a wider, different barrage of films. Like we probably wouldn't go on and and remake consistently Black Christmas. If, I don't know why, like, Black Christmas was such a weird film. Um, but I honestly think that we probably wouldn't have uh, Black Christmas, especially in America, because I think originally it's a uh, Japanese film. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, we probably wouldn't have Black Christmas if, as a remake in America if not for The Silence of the Lambs. Because that movie and this one uh, is to be a little bit on the bizarre side, uh, but kind of similar. Um, so with that said, teeing it up. Uh, right now, this movie isn't easily available on a number of certain apps. Like, it's like Fubo or Goofo or whatever goofy thing. Uh I would probably recommend there's a number of apps they use over time uh, that have like these bootleg kind of things to them. So you can go on to uh, a Google search and search the word C uh, movies app. Uh, really for that app, there is to be like an updated thing of it that uh, goes and has you go into this yes movies app thing. And eventually you'll go on and, and see a number of things for absolutely free. Uh, Fox HD Movies, regardless of what I say next, uh, the title of this, uh, because the logo is Fox HD Movies, but the title of the app is Play 1080p HD Movies. And then last but not certainly least, we have another app called TV Crush, two words. And so... Go on and find within the Google search that this app has changed its logo and its name to eventually be HD Movies, one, two, three, movies. And you can find a logo that says HD Movies with a king crown off the side. Go ahead and down that, download that app. Be able to say that you can see a bunch of stuff for absolutely free. Especially if you go on, you need a subtitle uh, for a movie because maybe there's... Uh, a movie that is too much uh, in a certain language you can't go on and, and find a translation so use that 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 works so now that I've said all of that stuff oh my god <laughs> now I have to go on and talk about this whole movie <laughs> man that's great uh, so now uh, teeing it up, what is this movie about? So, come to find out, we have Clarice, who is to be this FBI, uh, in training, uh, detective inspector, whatever the equivalent of FBI's title usually is. So, Clarice is to go and get word from Crawford that she is to have to go on to uh, make it to uh, Hannibal Lecter's uh, place that he is being imprisoned and kind of like go on and, and make some assessments about him, just kind of introduce herself to him. And so after she goes on and does that, she comes back to the FBI to go on and do... 
uh, a number of certain kind of scenarios and play certain things out. And then if there wasn't a hint that Lecter was to probably think that uh, Buffalo Bill was probably going to be something that Clarice is going to talk to him about, when Clarice is to go back to Lecter, she then is to go on and ask, uh, of course, Lecter about Buffalo Bill to try to understand him more. So, while that happens, we start to go on and have a number of different, uh, like, transitions for not only Lecter, but us as the viewers that has to have to go through a number of different spots and find certain victims and go on and try to put the pieces of the puzzle together for Clarice, because we already know who the bad guy is. So, with that said, uh, I think it's about that time to just go into spoilers, because I went very vague with the teeing up thing, uh, but... For a lot of people, a lot of people have probably seen The Silence of the Lambs because it's been out for such a long time. I haven't seen it. Huh? How dare you go on and just assume everyone has seen this movie? How dare it? <laughs> He's talking to himself again. Huh? <laughs> Moving on. So... I think it's about that time to just double five our way because it's about time to say that we've seen this movie because we technically have. So it's about time to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about the time we get to spoil f this movie. So in the very beginning of this film, we have Clarice who is running around in sweats. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Why would anybody in their life go on... And be doing a whole obstacle course in sweats. Does that make sense to anybody? Hence why we have things like Under Armour now. Um, and like athletic wear. Like nobody would go on and be doing some like obstacle course in freaking sweats. That seems banana. Uh, <laughs> so Clarice is making her way through this obstacle course. And all of a sudden, this FBI instructor just c comes over to Clarice and says, Hey, Jack Crawford needs you. And Clarice is like, okay, great. So Clarice makes her way to Jack Crawford, who, not quite sure, was on Red Dragon or not. I'll have to eventually go on and maybe through sequels go and kind of check that out. So Clarice goes on and is to talk to Jack. And... Here's the goofy thing. We have Lecter at one point asking Clarice if uh, if Clarice thinks that Jack thinks of her in like a uh, like a possible like uh, loving manner or uh, to think that like Jack probably thinks of Clarice um, in a number of scenarios in his brain. <laughs> Why? Why would Lecter go on and ask that? To just go on and, like, twist that wrench whenever Clarice, Clarice comes to him? And, and if Clarice was to say yes, then um, Lecter is probably just be like, oh, well, like, uh, she must really like Jack if... Uh, if she, of course, is going on and saying yes to that question. So, but Clarice is to talk to Jack. And so Jack is telling uh, Clarice to go on and go to Hannibal Lecter's place that he is to be imprisoned. And just kind of get a feel of him and so on and so forth. So Clarice goes uh, on to meet with uh, Frederick uh, Chilton, who, of course, we had seen him in Red, Red Dragon uh, because they didn't recast this guy. 
the whole thing of it is, I'm not quite sure if the prison in Red Dragon looks the exact same as this prison, and it probably should. Uh, but you could probably say that there is some repainting and remodeling done over the years, right? Uh, anyways, so... <laughs> We have Clarice who is talking to Chilton, and while they continue to walk, we have Chilton that is to go on and get uh, excused from following Clarice all the way down to where Lecter is. And so Chilton was to ask uh, Clarice, it's like, well, hey, like, why did you have me walk all the way down here? And uh, Clarice is like, well, I just enjoyed your company. And so Chilton is like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. You just wasted my freaking time. So Clarice goes on and is to start to walk uh, down this stretch of uh, cells and, and glass hallways, so to speak. So we, of course, go on. And while uh, Clarice is walking, we have a number of certain uh, inmates, psychopaths, that are going on and are to either do uh, like their version of a, a weird, creepy uh, cat call or uh, to go on and uh, kind of say certain things to this woman. So... Miggs especially is to go on and say something rude of which that I don't really want to repeat. But at some point we have Lecter asking Clarice what uh, Miggs had said. And so Lecter is to go on and get even with Miggs uh, from what he had done to Clarice, especially when Clarice leaves and he goes on and blows a load in her face, basically. <laughs> he, he he rubs one out and then he chucks uh, chucks his uh, man juice upon Clarice's face when she leaves. But but we'll we'll go on and get to the whole Clarice Hannibal Lecter thing here. So. The first thing is that Clarice is to show Lecter her badge, which he is to realize, like, well, hey, like, the the whole licensing is to an is a is to an expire in a week. So we have Clarice mentioning that she is a trainee, and so Lecter is going on and saying, like, oh. Crawford sent me a trainee. Oh. <laughs> so. We have Clarice with this questionnaire. And all these things. And Clarice is to also look at the at the drawing that Lecter has uh, to have put. Um, and so Lecter goes on and says like, well, yeah, like. I went on and drew that because I don't have a window. I don't have a view. So, like, that's the reason for uh, for me having that. So, we end up having uh, Clarice and Hannibal talking about Buffalo Bill at some point. Because, uh, of course, it has to come up. Where Lecter is to assume the reasoning for... Clarice wanting uh, to talk to Lecter is possibly about this Buffalo Bill case. And eventually they're going on and talking about trophies. And so we have Clarice who's to mention that uh, it seems that uh, Buffalo Bill is to keep trophies, and Lecter is like, well, um, like, I never had trophies, and Clarice is like, well, of course you didn't, because you ate yours. So, 
when Lecter always seems to be threatened, a lot of times he ends up lashing out on people. So, really, we have uh, Lecter, who is no different, as he used to go on and take a big whiff of, uh, of Clarice uh, to smell her and and so on and so forth. So, we have Lecter who starts to go on and starts to ping on Clarice as she, as she had talked. So, we have Lecter who is to mention about Clarice's accent that she is trying to uh, get rid of. And... That also, Lecter is to mention that Clarice is a rube and that she's white trash or very close to being white trash. And her father must have been some, uh, like some farmer or some miner or something like that. And so, really, he, of course, uh, within this is to just try to continue to belittle uh, Clarice. And so eventually at one point Clarice, via Lecter wanting to know more about Clarice, eventually finds out that Clarice's father was this, uh, was this sheriff. And hence why, of course, Clarice went on to to be involved in law enforcement simply because of her father. And how the fact that Clarice's father was to go and do a call where there were two robbers and her father ended up getting shot. And so eventually Clarice ended up being becoming an orphan but but that happens a little bit later when Lecter wants uh, a little bit more from Clarice but so we also had Lecter who was to mention like how Clarice was uh, to probably be going on uh, and being in a number of back seats of a number of different men and hoping that one day she would go on and she would leave her town. And so Clarice is to like mention about Lecter's intellect and how he can't go on and do that to himself. And Lecter at that point is just kind of like, well, like touche kind of thing. Well, there's nothing I can say about that. So, because I think a lot of people want to know about Lecter and, like, nobody can get through to him. Nobody can go on and, like, drug him or sedate him or whatever or get some kind of truth serum uh, to really work on Lecter. So, we have Clarice that is to go on and after Clarice decides to almost leave and Miggs does what he does, Clarice runs back to Lecter and is to mention to Clarice that she's that he's sorry of what happened to her just then and that he's gonna go on and tell her about one of uh, one of the previous clients of his called Miss Muffet and Miss Miss Mossett I think it's Miss Muffet um, and so we of course have uh, Lecter also telling uh, Clarice to look uh, deep inside herself and 
or yeah look look deep inside herself so Clarice goes on and is to look into what Hannibal Lecter was saying and so we have in the early parts of this movie also we had this flashback that I forgot about where uh, young Clarice was to hug her father when he came home for work one day. Uh, I almost forgot about that. So Clarice is to go on and is to take uh, what Lecter was to go on and say and figure out that uh, look deep inside yourself was to, of course, be tied uh, to this place that, of course, was uh, to be called your self-storage. So, Clarice then goes on and is to... is to check this place out. So we go on and we, of course, have Clarice, who is speaking to a guy named uh, Mr. Lang. So Mr. Lang is to go on and give Clarice the keys to this storage unit. And... Clarice, of course, is having a difficult time getting this thing open. It's stuck. So, we have Mr. Lang that uh, isn't able to help Clarice. And he's telling her, it's like, well, hey, like, I have, uh, like, I think he says that he ends up having a son that can come in here tomorrow and help her out. And... Clarice asks about Mr. Lang's driver, and he ends up saying, like, well, like, this guy doesn't want to go on, do any physical labor. So, Clarice goes on to just take this, uh, like, this tire jack, and is to tell Mr. Lang, hey, I'm going to give you a card, uh, if for any reason anything happens here, like, you have that card. So... Clarice goes into this uh, into this storage uh, area and is to find this car uh, with this kind of uh, this kind of clothing mannequin inside and Clarice goes on to find a head inside this uh inside this uh inside the uh the storage thing also come to find out when we have Clarice that is to go on and question Lecter about this when she meets back up with him he ends up saying that the head was to be of a client of his that was already dead and this guy's name was actually Benjamin uh, Ras uh, Raspail who had gone on and, and changed his identity and changed who he was and so really that's why this guy was going by Miss Moffat uh, so we have Clarice after going on and finding this head. Uh, we then go on and have Clarice who is to then go into more uh, more FBI training to go on and try to 
uh, go into a room with another detective and hope that they won't get shot, but uh, it seems that Clarice wasn't looking in a certain way. Uh, we have her going on and doing all these, like, this boxing training, and then she ends up getting pulled uh, to go on and do this investigation. So, while that's going on, uh, we have, of course, Buffalo Bill, who ends up taking another woman. So, James Gum is his name. So, Buffalo Bill is to go on and be putting this thing of furniture, uh, like this recliner, into the back of this van. And Catherine Martin, who is to be coming home with groceries, all of a sudden spots this guy who has his arm in a cast, and she's like, oh, okay, maybe I'll go and help him because it looks like he's having a difficult time putting this thing into this vehicle. So Catherine's like, hey, can I help? And he's like, okay, yeah, sure. So Catherine goes on and is to have one half of the, the furniture and she gets further and further put into this vehicle. And then Buffalo Bill asks this girl if she's a size 14 and she says like yeah i think so so we then have buffalo bill who goes and knocks this girl out and then they drive away so we now of course have to transition Ugh. uh to uh, Clay County, West Virginia. I think they end up saying like uh, like Elk River, West Virginia, uh, but none of the less. Um, we have Crawford and we have Clarice who are in this helicopter making their way to West Virginia. And so... We have Crawford, who is to mention about the third victim, who is uh, Frederica Bimmel. And they are to go on and uh, mention like where they found her and what she looks like. And so they're kind of going on and, and talking about this girl. So they... are of course to have uh claire or clarice and crawford go on uh to meet with a bunch of these sheriffs and and guys of that county and so crawford is to mention that like hey i appreciate uh like you guys giving us your jur jurisdiction jurisdiction and so we have, uh, like, one of the, the uh, I think the sheriff who car starts mouthing off and Crawford is to say, it's like, well, hey, like, with the sensitivity of this case, can we go and speak privately? But Crawford just wants to go on and get rid of him. And Crawford is to mention to Clarice that, um, that Crawford kind of used Clarice so that way he can just kind of get rid of this guy. And not so that way um, Crawford didn't see Clarice as an equal. And Clarice is just like, oh, okay, well, point taken. All right, whatever. So Crawford goes on with Clarice to the corner to then take this body and adjust it. So, while they go on and start taking pictures, and Clarice is to mention everything about the body, which I'm not going to go into specifics, because man, would that just take forever. So, but the big thing is they end up taking pictures of the mouth, and Clarice is to look at the photo, and she realizes that there's something inside the mouth. 
So they end up taking it out, realizing it that there is some kind of unusual thing about this. So we have Clarice that goes on to uh, speak with, uh, I guess, bug experts, both uh, Pitch, uh, uh, Pilcher and Rodin. And they have to go on and to, uh, like, cut a little bit of it. But they end up saying that it's some kind of moth. And evidently, uh, it's only from Asia. And so there could have been a possibility that this thing could have been imported. And so... Really... Uh, Whoever was to go on and have something like this was to really take care of it and was really uh, loving to it and uh, because like it was a rare thing, of course, for him to obtain this kind of thing. So come to find out that was a moth. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So we... I think we have the moment right after this where uh, where Buffalo Bill is telling uh, Catherine to put the lotion in the basket or otherwise gets the hose again. And so Catherine is to go on and put lotion upon her body Um and so Buffalo Bill is to bring this basket down and then kind of dispose of it. So Catherine, I guess, is to not really eat within a number of days uh, because supposedly Buffalo Bill likes to go and starve these women uh, before getting rid of them. So that way, like, their skin is... is uh, is thinner or, or the skin is looser so because he of course likes to skin them uh hence why uh when Lecter and uh <laughs> Clarice were to talk about like well hey why do you think he skins uh why do you think he skins uh his people uh, like, the skins are the trophies, and, uh, of course, Lecter never kept any trophies. So, besides the ones that he ate. So, who, uh, so, now we have to go on and... Have, of course, where Clarice is just go on and have to go back to speak with Lecter. And this time around, Clarice is uh, running in there, pouring down rain. And I think that this is where, like, uh, the lights are out. And so... Clarice is just pouring down rain, wanting to talk to Lecter about what she had found. Lecter goes on and is to give her a towel that he has. And so Lecter, uh, or Clarice starts patting herself down. And heaven forbid I remember any of the dialogue that happens between this, between in this part. Because <laughs> heaven forbid, right? Um... And so, Lecter is to go on and realize that he's going to talk to Clarice consistently about Buffalo Bill. And then try to exchange things. So, because Lecter, the second time around, is to mention that the reasoning that Clarice was to go on and show that storage room 
is because, come to find out, the head of that guy's client had some tie to Buffalo Bill. Because Lecter was to go on and say in a separate time that both of them were meeting that uh, that guy was a patient of his and he was already dead. And so this time around, Lecter is to go on and because the clock is ticking and Clarice is to find out that the senator's daughter is to be taken and everybody is starting to think that it isn't political, it's just coincidence. So, Clarice is wanting to go on and hope that Lecter is to have some, uh, some words of wisdom for her as well as Clarice is to go on and tell Lecter that they're making more uh, accommodations for him, more rights for him, and are transferring, transferring him over to, of course, a different, uh, a different prison. Because we have Lecter that is to go on and complain about how Chilton is to go on and torture him at some point, supposedly, with uh, these religious TV shows or to get rid of certain things like his drawings and stuff like that uh, when he possibly misbehaves and so on and so forth. So... The more that Lecter is to help out this case, the more Clarice is willing to uh, tell him about the certain uh, research facilities and stuff like that. Um, that will give him more benefits, being able to swim, uh, of course, under supervision, and... Uh, eventually being able to do things like go outside and so on and so forth, especially for Lecter, is a big plus, is a big advantage. So, through the number of times that they continue to talk to one another. So, Lecter is to go on and immediately uh, tell everybody who exactly this guy is. Who Buffalo Bill is as speaking of which Lecter was to go on and ask why uh, why the guy was named Buffalo Bill and supposedly it was some kind of joke but then it ended up just kind of taking off so Lecter after going on and continuing to talk to Clarice is to get transferred and so when Lecter is to go on and get transferred he of course is to have to then go to the Memphis International Airport uh, so that way he can go on and talk to the senator uh, who of course is also with the FBI director Hayden Birch, uh, because Crawford is it is to get a call that uh, this other FBI guy is going to uh, take over uh, this whole transfer of Lecter uh, getting out of there. So we have Senator Ruth Martin who is going on and speaking with Lecter, and Ruth in this scene is to talk to Lecter about his daughter or about her daughter um, as Senator Ruth was to go on and be on TV 
and had several different pictures of her daughter and was trying to convince Buffalo Bill to like, hey, you can be strong, but you can also just like give up my daughter. <laughs> like, don't don't do anything. Don't do anything wrong to my daughter and so on and so forth. So Lecter is going on and talking to Senator Ruth and is asking for her if uh if her daughter was ever uh breastfed and Senator Ruth says yes. And so Lecter goes on and so says like, oh, because of like the way uh, that your um, nipples will be like, I'm sure by the time that you are to go on and find out that your daughter's dead, I bet there's going to be a tingling in a certain area. <laughs> when you find this out um because lector is to compare this certain story of uh of a tingling uh to what is going to happen to the senator so we have the senator telling lector to uh Lecter and the, the the people around him to just get this monster out of here. So Lecter is to be taken and is to be put to the Shelby County Courthouse where he used to be like caged there. So we have a number of guards that are looking over him or after him and so we then have Clarice going there because really when they start looking into this and they look into the fact that uh, Lecter's former client was to have Buffalo Bill as this lover and it didn't work out. Really what... Lecter was to lie about was the guy's actual name. So, but what Lecter didn't lie about is the description of the character. So, Crawford is just chasing a description of this character while Clarice is going to be chasing something else. So, Clarice, when seeing Lecter at this courthouse, she is to try and desperately get a legitimate name out of Lecter. And so Lecter is to go on and say, it's like, well, I need something in return. Like there's only so many resorts and so many wonderful things that you can offer me. Like I want something like personal from you. And so Lecter of course wants to know the whole story of her father and then, like, how she grew up after her father died. And so, come to find out Clarice was to work on some farm. And there, of course, was to be one night where all the lambs in this farm were all screaming. And Clarice was to find out that these lambs were getting slaughtered. And Clarice ran in there, tried to grab one of the lambs, but the lamb eventually got so heavy and she was walking so far that at some point the police were to spot her and were to have like brought her back and brought this lamb to the slaughter. And so when... Clarice is to always have nightmare after nightmare after nightmare um, dreaming about that whole scene there and remembering the lamb screaming. Lecter is to go on and say, it's like, oh, so that's why you want to catch uh, Buffalo Bill so that way you can go on and no longer hear the lamb screaming. And Clarice is like, well, yes. So, 
Lecter is to go on and uh, really not give Clarice much, but is to give her back her file. So, with that, we now have Hannibal, who is to figure out a way to escape. So, Hannibal goes on and has this little metal piece that he's holding in his hand. And so, while this lieutenant and this other officer are giving Lecter a meal, Hannibal is to have this kind of metal piece in his hand, and he is to wait till he soon gets cuffed to this cage, and these guys are kind of taking forever uh, to put his meal on this table, because he, of course, is to like kind of spread out all these things onto this table to where this lieutenant has to adjust certain things. So Hannibal is to figure out how to unlock himself with this little metal piece to get out of these cuffs. And so he goes on and cuffs this other officer and then takes this billy club to the lieutenant and, and kills him and then starts eating away at all these people and so when the SWAT team bursts in trying to figure out what it all happened there is one officer that had his kind of face just torn and the other officer is just kind of hanging with his stomach uh, with his stomach and entrails and stuff falling out and so Interesting enough, within this movie, uh, we have Chris Isaac as one of the SWAT members. If you don't know Chris Isaac, uh, he ended up doing this song called Wicked Games. Uh, and immediately I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Why does that one SWAT guy look familiar? I'm like, oh my god, that's Chris Isaac. Uh, and we also had one moment in this movie where there was an FBI guy that was actually George Romero who went on to do a lot of the the zombie movies like the the dawns of the deads and the the land of the dead and um the return of the living dead i think the all those kind of uh zombie movies so george romero is in this film isn't that interesting so We have the police kind of scrambling in, and so the one guy who has kind of like the face uh, torn, but he's still seemingly alive, they're hauling him out on this ambulance, and so they're naturally assuming that Lecter had went into this elevator, and so when they go into this elevator thinking that Lecter is still there, they all of a sudden realize that Lecter is actually on the roof of the elevator. And so they go on to pull Lecter out of this elevator and come to find out they can't really put the pieces together if this is really him or not. So come to find out the ambulance is kind of driving away with this police officer and Lecter is to kind of pull off the skin and is to attack this guy and then is to go on and just kind of get out of here and, and murder all these people and go on and by the end of the movie is to call Clarice and is to mention that he's going to go on and see an old friend which was Clinton and kill him and eat him so now that i've covered all of that now we can cover what happens to clarice so clarice while we of course have uh crawford who is going on and doing what he's doing we of course have Clarice who is going on uh, to have another idea that she's going to revisit the first victim uh, which I guess will take place in 
uh, Belvedere, Iowa, or Ohio. Ohio! Um, so... I don't know why I said it that way. So, Clarice goes to Ohio and is to go to the first victim's place where Clarice goes into this girl's jewelry box where she finds some hidden compartment with a number of photos where this girl is to seemingly uh, continue to take clothing after clothing after clothing off. So Clarice is to go into this woman's place and is to find out that these things of clothing that she had was, I guess, sewn a certain way. And we have Clarice, who's possibly thinking that Buffalo Bill can be some kind of seamstress and could go on to... Uh, like, that's what he's using the, the skins for, is to sew himself into a woman, I guess. So, we have Buffalo Bill that is with Catherine, and we have Buffalo Bill who is playing this music and like, uh, would you, f me, I'd, f me, I'd, f me hard. <laughs> and so while Buffalo Bill is playing this music and talking himself, let's just say, obviously, uh, with his nipple ring and everything. So dancing it out, we have Catherine that is wanting to, like put together some kind of plan uh, because she had saved some of her food so that way she can lure this dog uh, to go by this well where Catherine then can pull this dog down to her so she has a bargaining trip for uh, Buffalo Bill to possibly let her go or to bring a phone down there is what really she's at, she asked for. So... Buffalo Bill is to find out what is happening to his dog and runs down to see Catherine. And so Buffalo Bill and Catherine are arguing and all of a sudden that ends up getting broken up by this, uh, by this doorbell ringing. And so Simus simultaneously at the same time that Crawford is going after his man, we also have uh, Clarice that is going after hers. So there is to be a door. Op uh, there's a door uh, going to be opened uh, in two different places, and we have this flower salesman that is going, or flower delivery man that is going on and delivering flowers with Crawford and uh, Clarice is to knock on this door and ask Buffalo Bill uh, if he is to be familiar with the first victim. And so he goes on and plays it off as like, well, no, I um. So we have Clarice that is to go on further into Buffalo Bill's place. And she all of a sudden is to notice uh, the moth. To where she's like, yep, this is the guy. So we have Buffalo Bill who's supposed to be giving her some card. And eventually Bill instead when he realizes the jig is up, he runs down to his basement and Clarice starts to run after him. The basement ends up going dark after Clarice, of course, is to find Catherine 
and Catherine is yelling and screaming about this girl better not leave and that she wants to get out of here and and so Clarice is trying in some way to try to comfort Catherine but it's really not working so Clarice continues to just go and try to go down here and to see uh, in any area where Buffalo Bill could pop out from. So the power goes out and we have Buffalo Bill with these night vision goggles as of course he had used these before to start to scout out Catherine. So we have Clarice that goes on and is trying to figure out where possibly Buffalo Bill could be. And she ends up firing her gun when she is to hear something and ends up killing Buffalo Bill. And so now Clarice is to go on and catch her man and is to become a full-time FBI agent. And we, of course, have Crawford, who is going to Clarice's ceremony and is to shake her hand. Just like, well, yeah, like, I'm not really good at stuff like this, so I think I'm just going to leave. And so... Crawford is to mention that Clarice is to have a phone call. Clarice gets the phone call and ends being Lecter, and I already kind of mentioned that. And, like, that's how the movie just kind of wraps up uh, for this. Oh, my God. Hopefully, I went on and said most of this movie. Oh, man. Uh, that was a lot. Uh, um, so, <laughs> that said... Um, I think I'm just going to get out of here because I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, but anyways, hopefully I went on and was to say a bulk of this film of what happened. Um, because man, uh, there was a lot of stuff that I'm just, ha I just had to like dig away and just be like, okay, like I'm second guessing everything that I'm saying here. Uh, but let's roll on anyways. Oh my god. Thank god I never have to do that ever again. Um, hopefully the mistakes weren't uh, so horrible or so bad. Uh, because man, I never want to go on <laughs> and review this again. Because um, man, uh, that was just a lot to just have to like... Uh, uh, all just kind of compile... Really, I think probably Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy probably has to be the most, like, complicated uh, review because it's a bunch of just goofy stuff that doesn't make sense. But uh, this would probably have to be pretty far up there for just a very, uh, like, complex and just a lot of uh, different uh, bits and pieces. Plus, like, this movie kind of does certain things a little bit more with Clarice consistently going to Lecter and so that could be like an easy confusion for me just like well what the f did they say through every single time throughout every time that Clarice went to Lecter but who man um one thing though uh like this was exhausting to get it out but um the thing, man, uh, I think the very first time that I ever reviewed that, like that movie was exhausting to watch. And then I turned around and I did the review afterwards and I'm like, oh my God, whoo, like that movie. Whoa, man, that was a workout. Like that was exhausting, I think is what I ended up saying for the thing. Um, because man, there was a lot of, uh, like me being happy that I saw that film um, because I've always ever wanted to see it. Uh, and then I ended up seeing the remake of it 
that was technically more like a prequel movie. Um, but anyways, man, I can't wait to go on and review Hannibal and uh, Hannibal Rising. I think I'm going to need to go on and take a break <laughs> from these films. Uh, and then I'll have to and then I'll kind of come back uh, within a, a day or two and uh, get the rest of them out. Um, yeah, that that was that was uh, that was an experience, uh, so to say. Um, and also, like, I'll admit that I'm not the best at reviewing uh, stuff, but uh, man, um, some of these movies are actually just like, it's good that this is a one off. And I never want to go back. Uh, but the good thing, if, if I messed up, if like something is way off, uh, that's what also a sequel is for. I can go on a rebuttal. I can say, yeah, I messed up about this. I didn't say this correctly. I didn't go on and in detail about this or blah, 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 blah. So correct me all you like, anybody, because I'm going to just go on into the, the, the sequel rebuttal thing and uh just correct any of my mistakes because <laughs> that's what probably will happen so that's it goodbye everybody bye everybody